Hey everybody, I've been asked to move up a bit. I'm Peter Clausey with CBLT Inc. Apparently they lost the blockchain people. So it tells you something about the blockchain if they lost them. And so I've been asked to move up and do the presentation on project generation. Hi, Brad. It's um, always nice to be here. This is my fourth year coming to this event. Last year was all battery metals. And I tell uh, people I meet in the industry, this is one of my favorite places to come to meet people, get new ideas, and see how things work. We're in the business, though, of making money for our shareholders. We got into the cobalt space about two years ago, pretty much ahead of many other people. Problem is the Canadian markets did not give us or indeed any of the Cobalt Juniors real value for the assets that we had. So if we're not going to get real value that way, we came up with a better plan to generate, out, to generate real value. The disclaimer, has anybody ever read a disclaimer? Yeah? yeah? I did. Is it good? Well, not, not yours. <laughs> and there we go. So for this conversation, we're only talking about our properties in Gauganda, which is part of the Cobalt Embayment, and one of our properties in Sudbury. We have other properties in Sudbury, British Columbia, and Quebec, but this conversation is only about Gauganda and our MAC track claims in Sudbury. In Gauganda, we bought five assets in a portfolio. We paid. $114,000 for five assets, uh, roughly $50,000 in cash, the rest in stock. Went to Australia at the end of um, uh, January, met with bankers, investment bankers, miners, promoters, financiers, and began to tell our story. Australia is far more advanced than Canada and decades ahead of the United States when it comes to the recognition of, of capitalizing upon critical metals. Cobalt is a critical metal, as you heard yesterday, as you've seen in the news. You know it's important when Elon Musk makes fun of it, and he's downplaying the need for cobalt. Even the batteries made for Tesla by Panasonic need 4.5 uh, kilograms of cobalt per battery. So we sold one asset. I like, I like the dancing money. Sold one asset called Bloom Lake for $50,000 cash and $50,000 in stock. We had a lot of faith in that management team. That stock, though, has increased 700%. So what we sold for 100 grand, we actually got $400,000 of value out of for one asset. Remember, we bought the whole portfolio for 114. We then optioned, uh, sold two other assets. Again, dancing money. Corkle, Lawson, and Farr for 50,000 and 87,000 in stock. As of this morning, the stock was up over $100,000. So again, this is one asset that's part of the portfolio of five, and between this and the other company, we're up over $600,000. Not done yet, we then optioned off two of the remaining assets in Gauganda. For that, we got more dancing money, $20,000 for each option, plus a minimum work commitment over the next year. We also get a 10% management fee. They, being in Australia, don't want to come to Canada to learn the system, learn the local geologists, the uh, regional geologists, First Nations. So they've asked us to run the program for them, and for that we get an additional 10% management fee. The price is $100,000 if at the end of the first year they want to buy the properties. If they do that, with the minimum spend, that's a, roughly a million dollars of value to us, for which we spent $114,000. Then we go to Sudbury, one of the great geologic wonders of the world. We purchased Mack Track roughly six months ago. We found a historic shaft of five ounces of gold over 50 feet. Plus, we found gold and cobalt in a quartz vein at the east end of the property, near where the Nipissing Diabase intersects the basement rock. We quite liked that. The uh, prospector quoted a number that we refused to pay. Eventually, winter came and the prospector got cold. So he sold us the property for $25,000. $10,000 in cash, $15,000 in stock. We announced two weeks ago that we've sold that to another Australian company called International Cobalt. International Cobalt, again with the dancing money, paid $250,000 for what we paid 25 grand for six months ago. Again, half in stock, half in cash.
And we're in negotiations acquiring other assets. And we're in negotiations to sell those assets and some of our existing ones at embarrassing profits for the shareholders. This is a difficult time to raise money if you're a junior mining company, no matter how good your assets, no matter what your jurisdiction. This has been the nuclear winter of mining finance. So to survive, you have to be clever, you have to be smart, you have to be willing to do things differently. We have in effect done a million dollar non-brokered financing on which we paid no fees and didn't dilute the stock whatsoever. These are all hard dollars. So raising flow through is gonna be incredibly easy on top, of the, uh, on top of the hard dollars to fulfill all of our work commitments we have. We plan to do work in Sudbury at our main asset, which is large gold and, and cobalt with copper at the north end. We are starting a aerial drone mag program at our Quebec property next week. The helicopter quote was $60,000. The drone is gonna cost us 16, one six thousand dollars. We just finished IP survey at our Copper Prince property in Sudbury. Up at Otto Lake, the Ontario Geologic Survey did its own work on our property because it was geologically interesting, and they found a new gold discovery on our property, which has now been lodged with the MDI. So we'll be back at Otto Lake this summer following up on that new gold discovery. Plus, we'll be managing the programs on behalf of the Australians. We have a busy summer ahead. There's more than one way to finance a junior mining company. And that, is what a project generator looks like. Thanks.